Hey, how's it going guys? Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to kill Dagonauts, but before I start this video, if you're looking for some more Slayer guides, please check out the description box below for a full list of all the guides I've posted thus far. Enjoy the rest of the video. So using one of my Slayer guides is very simple. All you need to do is select the armor that you want to wear depending on the attack style that you want to use, and then just pick the location for where you want to kill the monsters. So you can pause the video now to write down the timestamps, and then you can skip around the video to watch the parts that you want to watch. So here are just some recommendations before jumping into this tutorial. The Soul Bear is an excellent item to bring here because these monsters drop a lot of insult heads, and this item allows you to send these insult heads straight to the bank, saving you lots of inventory space during your Slayer task. The Soul Bear mini quest only takes like 5 minutes to do, and I already made a guide on how to get this item which I will link in the description box below. Another common item that people like to bring for Slayer tasks is the Dwarf Multi Cannon, so if you finish the Dwarf Cannon quest, you can buy a Dwarf Cannon and Cannonballs from the Grand Exchange, or if you're an Iron Man, you can also buy a Cannon from Nelodeon, south of Ice Mountain and west of Edgeville, and then you can just make your own Cannonballs using steel bars and using it on a furnace with an ammo mold. This monster also drops a lot of herbs, so bringing a herb sack will save you a lot of inventory spaces during your trip. It does cost 750 Slayer points in the Slayer shop, but it's an item definitely worth getting if you plan on training Slayer for long term. If you use any of the prayer setups, the Holy Wrench is a great item that helps you save money on restoring your prayer points. You get this as a reward for completing the rum deal quest, and essentially what it does is that it restores an extra prayer point for every sip of a prayer potion, super restore potion, or sand fuse serum. The Bone Crusher is also a very good item to bring for the Slayer task because it has the ability to automatically bury bones, and this is extremely useful in places such as the Catacombs or Kren, where you basically heal prayer points for every bone that you bury. You can get the Bone Crusher from doing the hard Mori Tanya Diary, and then filling it with charges using Ecto Tokens that you get for worshipping Bone Meal at the Ecto Funtus. This monster also drops a lot of seeds, so having a seed box can help save you a lot of inventory space. The seed box can store an unlimited amount of up to 6 different kinds of seeds, and you can get this item from doing the Tithe Farm minigame and purchasing it from Farmer Grycaller for 250 points. So now we will go over the armor setups, and feel free to use the timestamps on the screen now to choose your preferred armor setup. So let's go over one of the most effective setups here, which is a melee setup that maximizes your attack and defensive bonuses. On this chart here, I've highlighted some of the best armor choices in green on the left hand side, and the items to the right are also very good alternatives for this setup. So using the chart that I made, I created a couple of different setups that you guys can use as a reference for when you create your own setup. And like I said before, these are just templates, don't be afraid to alter it to your own liking. So let's talk about a melee setup that maximizes your attack, strength, and prayer bonuses. On this chart here, I've highlighted some of the best armor choices in green on the left hand side, and the items to the right are also very good alternatives for this setup. So using the chart that I made, I created a couple of different setups that you guys can use as a reference for when you create your own setup. And like I said before, these are just templates, don't be afraid to alter it to your own liking. So let's go over a ranging setup, and on this chart here, I've listed the best items that you can wear from the left to the right. All of the items highlighted in green are the items that I would recommend that you try to focus on because they provide very good bonuses for killing this monster. So using the chart that I made, I created a couple of different setups that you guys can use as a reference for when you create your own setup. And like I said before, these are just templates, don't be afraid to alter it to your own liking. You may also consider using magic because it's still a very effective way to kill these things. On this chart here, I've listed some of the best armor choices highlighted in green on the left hand side, and the items to the right are also very good alternatives that you can use for this setup. In terms of the spell that you want to cast, you can use the normal spellbook or ancient magics. You also have the option of using a toxic trident which, paired with a serpentine helm, can be a very interesting option in multi-combat areas. The Staff of the Dead is also a very good staff because it boosts your magic damage by 15%. Chaos Gauntlets that you get from completing the Family Crest quest increases damage of bolt spells by 3. The Slayer Staff Enchanted is also really good, it can hit up to 30s and 40s for about 300 coins a cast. The upgraded Ivan Staff is pretty good as well for lower levels, it can deal 20s for about 300 to 400 coins a cast. So using the chart that I made, I created a couple of different setups that you guys can use as a reference for when you create your own setup. And like I said before, these are just templates, don't be afraid to alter it to your own liking. Now that we talked about armor setups, we will go through each of the different locations, what you should bring in your inventory depending on the attack style you've chosen, and I'll also provide you an example kill for this monster. So going over the Dagonauts in the Catacombs of Karend, these Dagonauts are in a multi-combat zone, but it is possible to safe spot them with Ranger Magic. 
They have a combat level of 74 and 92, and both of them have a max hit of 8 and only use melee attacks. Their attacks are pretty inaccurate, but like I said before, these guys are in a multi-combat zone, and multiple Dagonauts will attack you at once, so I'd recommend that if you're a lower level, you should use a melee setup that maximizes your prayer and attack bonuses, so you can use the protect from melee prayer to negate all the Dagonauts melee attacks, and if you're a higher level, you can instead use a setup that maximizes your defensive and attacking bonuses, and you'll take very minimal amounts of damage from these Dagonauts. So in terms of getting to this location, the fastest way to get here is by using the fairy ring code DJR and using the hole to the east. But just a warning though, if you do not wear a nose peg or a slayer helmet going down this hole, you will get hit by the Deviant Spectre's attacks which will completely drain your stats. Also, if this is your first time using this entrance and you do not see the hole, it means that you have not unlocked it yet, and to unlock it, you will need to go to the center of the Kingdom of Great Karen and climb down the main entrance into the catacombs, and once you're down there, you will need to navigate through the catacombs until you find the vine escapes, and once you climb up the vine, the hole will be permanently unlocked and visible on the surface for you to use. And if you're interested in learning how to navigate through the catacombs, I made a guide on how to do this which I will link in the description box below. The next fastest option that you have is entering the catacombs main entrance. And to get here, you can use the Koran teleport spell after you have read the transportation incantations book. And if you have level 69 magic, I made a guide on how to get the transportation incantation book. And I will link that guide in the description box below. The third option is by using a Xerix Talisman and teleporting yourself to Xerix Heart which will bring you to the Kingdom of Great Karen and you can use this teleport after you have completed the Architectural Alliance mini quest. Another option that you have is by using a Koren portal inside a player owned house. If you go to world 330 at the Brimington house portal, you'll see lots of hosts who have their houses open. Just go inside their house and use their Koren portal and this portal will bring you straight to the Kingdom of Great Karen. And taking a look inside the dungeon, if you use the entrance close to the fairy ring DJR, you can take this path here to get into the Dagonoth room. If you go through the main entrance at the statue, you can take this path here to get into the Dagonoth room. So here's the inventory setup for each attack style. You can copy it completely or you can change it to how you like. Same with the quick prayer settings. Here would be what I would choose, but if you want to change them, feel free to do so. So here would just be an example of how I would kill Dagonauts in the catacomb. So before climbing down the DJR entrance, I like to turn on my Protect from Magic Prayer, and then when you come down the hole, you want to run east down the steps and then just a little bit north into the Dagonoth room. You can turn on your Protect from Melee Prayer if you wish, and you can see where I like to stand with the green marker on the floor. You can turn off your Protect from Melee if you want to, activate your Quick Prayers, drink your stat boosting potions, have your Auto Retaliate on, and then you just stand there and then attack them. If you're using ranger magic to safe spot them, I like to turn on my protect from magic prayer and turn off my auto retaliate before climbing down the DGR entrance. And once you come down here, you can run east down the steps and you can see right away where the green floor markers are where I like to stand to safe spot them and the approximate locations on where the big level 92 Dagonauts are supposed to get stuck. If you cannot get them stuck, you can do what I just did here which is run northwest a few squares and then run back to the place where I like to stand and once those level 92 Dagonauts are stuck, you are pretty much completely safe. And then you can just go ahead, uh, drink your stat boosting potions. Uh, you can go ahead, activate your quick prayers. And then you can attack any of the Dagonauts that are stuck behind the level 92 ones. And then just keep repeating this process until you finish your Dagonauts task. So going over the Dagonauts at the lighthouse, these ones are in a multi-combat zone and there are unfortunately no safe spots that you can use. The ones here have a combat level of 74 and 92 and both of them have a max hit of 8. The level 74 rangers attacks are super inaccurate and even if you are lower level, you'll take practically no damage whatsoever from these attacks. The level 92 meleeers are a bit stronger and they hit a bit more accurately but still, with decent armor and stats, you'll take practically no damage from these ones as well. Both of these Dagonauts share a weakness to melee attacks, so I recommend using a melee defensive armor setup to kill these ones. And going over how to get there, the fastest way to the lighthouse is by using the fairy ring code ALP, and then entering the building to the east. The next fastest way is by using a games necklace teleport to Barbarian Outpost, and then jumping over the rocky path to the north to get to the lighthouse. So here's the inventory setup for each attack style. You can copy it completely or you can change it to how you like. Same with the quick prayer settings. Here would be what I would choose, but if you want to change them, feel free to do so. 
So here would just be an example of how I would kill Dagonoth in the lighthouse. So once you come into the lighthouse, you can climb down the ladder to the north and then run north until you see the strange wall. You want to right click the right side of it to open it up and then you can climb the ladder to the north into the Dagonoth room. And once you come into this room, you can see where I like to set up my cannon, but you can set it up virtually anywhere inside the room. Just make sure that it's firing by clicking on it, and then you can go ahead and activate your quick prayers, drink your stat boosting potions, turn on your auto retaliate, and just fill up your cannon with cannonballs whenever it runs low. So going over the Dagonauts at Waterbirth Dungeon, you'll be able to attack them in single or multi-combat areas. However, I recommend only to kill these Dagonauts in multi-combat areas if you have very good stats and defensive gear, because these Dagonauts are much more powerful compared to the ones located at the Catacombs and the Lighthouse. The level 88 Rangers are found predominantly in the multi-combat rooms, but they're also scattered around the single combat areas as well. They have a max hit of 18, their hits are semi-accurate, and they are particularly weak to stab attacks. The level 90 Meleers on the other hand are found predominantly in the single combat areas, but can also be found in the multi-combat rooms as well. They have a max hit of 15, they hit very accurately, and they don't have a particular weakness to any attack type or style. In terms of the recommended armor setup, I would suggest that you use a melee defensive armor setup while having the protect from melee prayer on. That way, you can negate all of the melee's accurate melee attacks while also being able to tank the semi-accurate range hits from the level 88 rangers if they do decide to attack you in the single combat areas. And like I said before, the level 88 rangers attacks are only semi-accurate, but if you have very good stats and defensive gear, you shouldn't have any issues tanking these range hits in multi-combat areas. And going over how to get to the Waterbirth Island dungeon, the fastest way to get here is by using the Waterbirth Teleport in the Lunar Spellbook at level 72 magic, and that'll bring you just east of the dungeon. The next fastest way to get here is by using a portal or a portal nexus in a player-owned house to get yourself to Waterbirth Island. If you don't have one of these in your house, you can go to the House Party World 330 at the Remington House Portal, and you'll see lots of hosts who have their houses open. Just pick a random host, enter their house, and then find their Waterbirth Portal or a Portal Nexus to bring yourself to Waterbirth Island. The next fastest way is by using an Enchanted Liar Teleport to Waterbirth Island, and that will also bring you just east of the dungeon. You can also get here by using a Teleport to House tablet with a redirection scroll that you get from Nightmare Zone to create yourself a Relica Teleport requiring level 30 construction to make. This will bring you to the House portal just south of Relica, and then you can run northwest to speak to Jarvald on the most western dock of Relica to travel to Waterbirth Island. But if you have not completed Fremnic Trials, you will need to pay Jarveld 1,000 coins in order to travel to the island. And taking a look inside the dungeon, when you immediately come down here, you'll find lots of the level 90 meleeers in the single combat room, and then you can use the Protect from Melee prayer to practically take no damage whatsoever. If you want to kill the ones in the multi-combat room, you can follow this path here to get to the northern gate, and to get through the gate, all you need is a pet rock which you can claim from Askeladden in the southern part of Relica after the Fremnic Trials quest, and then you can drop the pet rock onto one of the platforms while you stand on the other one to unlock the gate. Click the gate to go through, and then run east past the giant rock crabs until you get to the rune with the rune throne axes. Just wield your rune throne axe and then use the special attack on the western door to knock down all of the doors, and then you'll be able to climb down the ladder to get to floor 2. When you come to floor number 2, it does become a multi-combat zone, so you should be careful and follow the prayer signs I've listed on the map. But to get to my favorite multi-combat room spot for the Dagonauts, you can follow this path here to get to this location. And if you need more guidance on how to get to this spot, I will show you guys an example of how I run there in the next clip. So here's the inventory setup for each attack style. You can copy it completely or you can change it to how you like. Same with the quick prayer settings, here would be what I would choose, but if you want to change them, feel free to do so. So here would just be an example of how I would kill Dagonauts at Waterbirth Island, and I'll first show you guys the single combat room. So before climbing down, you should turn on your Protect from Melee prayer and then enter the dungeon. Click Go In, I Don't Mind Dying. And once you're down here, you can see where I like to set up my cannon, and I would suggest that you set it up near the entrance. Just make sure that it's firing by clicking on it. You can go ahead, activate your quick prayers, drink your stat boosting potions, have your auto retaliate on, and just drink a prayer potion when your prayer points run low, and fill your cannon with cannonballs when it runs low. If you're killing them in the multi-combat room, I'll show you guys how to navigate the dungeon. So before climbing down, I like to have my auto retaliate off. I drink a dose of my stamina potion, turn on my protect from melee prayer, and then climb into the cave entrance. 
When you come down here, you want to run northeast to the first gate. When you get to the gate, you can go ahead and drop your pet rock on one of the platforms and then you want to stand on the other platform and then click the gate to get through and then what you want to do is just keep running east Once you see the room starting to end, you want to run south and you'll be blocked off by the door supports just wield your rune throne axe and then go ahead and activate your special attack and left click the western door support so it knocks down all of the supports. Once they are knocked down, you can go ahead and wield your weapon, activate your protect from magic prayer and then you can climb down the ladder. And when you come down here you want to run east and then climb down the ladder and you want to change your prayer to protect from melee now and then you want to use the eastern ladder and climb up. And then you want to run east and then go south and you want to use the southern ladder. Climb down the ladder and then you want to run southwest and use the southern ladder. Climb up the ladder and then when you get to this room you want to run east and you want to climb down the eastern ladder. And once you're into my favorite room, you can see where I like to drop down my cannon which is on the northeastern part of this room. Just make sure that it's firing by clicking on it. You can go ahead and activate your quick prayers, drink your stab boosting potions, have your auto retaliate on, and have the stab option activated on your weapon if you have it. And just watch your health and prayer points and fill up your cannon with cannonballs when it begins to run out. Anyways guys, I'm going to wrap up the tutorial here. If this video has helped you out, I'd greatly appreciate it if you could leave a like on this video. Also, make sure to check out my entire catalog of Slayer guides in the description box below. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later.